I learned a new word the other day, soteriology. It means theology dealing with salvation. About half the definitions I saw also included, especially in reference to Jesus Christ, but theologists use it to describe the doctrines of salvation or liberation that sit at the core of virtually every religion. So an atheist might define it as the practice of convincing people that an imaginary part of themselves has an imaginary affliction that must be treated by imaginary means, which is apparently so ubiquitous they needed a fucking word for it. And to their credit, when you call it soteriology, it doesn't even sound evil, right? I mean, if they had to call it like extortion for imaginative underachievers, their victims might start scratching their heads. So they call it soteriology. And whether they're saving your soul from the sinful glance of that person you wanted to fuck or releasing your spirit from the cycle of death and rebirth, it's all the same fucking con. You're broken. There's something wrong with you. You're less than you could be. Normal and unavoidable biological functions are signs of your sinfulness. You are a filthy, disgusting, loathsome wretch. But don't worry, we can fix you for 52 easy payments a year. Now, some religions emphasize the positive rather than the negative, of course. You know, they dress it up less like there's something wrong with you and you suck, and more like, no, you're awesome, but you could also be so much more awesome and have superpowers. You know, all the New Age religions are like that. A lot of the less repugnant manifestations of Buddhism swing that way. But again, it's the same con just shifted down the spectrum. Now, as near as I can tell, this is a religious universal. There might be some counterexample out there that I haven't come up with yet, but in every example I could think of, the religion is either trying to save you from how innately shitty you are or trying to liberate you from how innately shitty Earth is. And I think it's worth pointing out, by the way, that the so-called nature religions fall into that latter category. That might seem counterintuitive when you consider how much reverence they have for the Earth, but as soon as you factor in human society being part of Earth, the facade falls away pretty quick. You know, sure, they love Earth, but only this insane, idealized, impossible version of Earth that has all the benefits of scientific advancement, but with no pollution, chemistry, or unhappy mole rats. You know, the actual world that they inhabit is broken, and to fix it, you need to resonate in harmony with the universe or some shit, which, of course, can only be achieved through their religion. So again, they might have shifted the ends of the scale, but it's still the same fucking con. And if you ask me, this is the primary thing that religion does. You know, when theists are trying to justify religion, they always talk about moral imperatives and community building and coping with loss, but that's the stuff they tell us about. That's like justifying Roman imperialism entirely from the perspective of art history. The point of the religion isn't to make people more moral or build communities or cope with mortality. The point is saving people from an imaginary threat for money. And sure, that's a cynical way of phrasing it, but I don't think that the thought behind it is cynical at all. It's just brutally honest. You know, go ask a Christian what the most important aspect of Christianity is. And, and find one that doesn't know you're an atheist and won't answer with their guard up. My guess is that you're going to hear about salvation. You're going to hear about personal relationships with Jesus. You're going to hear about the sacrifice that God made for us through murder, suicide, blah, blah, blah. You're going to hear about the soteriology. If you ask a Muslim, they'll tell you all about repentance. You know, they have to pray five times a day because apparently Muslim God is so strict that you can't even sleep for eight hours without doing something that pissed him off. You have to atone for the constant state of sin that you're in just by being a human being that does human being stuff. And sure, if an apologist is trying to sell the religion to a secular audience, they're not going to lead with that stuff, but that is what the religion itself is focused on. Uh, Jewish theology is so bloated and labyrinthine that I could forgive the average Jew for having no fucking clue what the point of their religion is. But if you dig deep enough, everything comes back to redemption. Everything comes back to getting God to forgive you for existing. You got Hindus, Buddhists, and Jains out there seeking liberation from samsara, which is the imaginary plight of immortality. Because, I mean, come on, what could possibly be worse than existing in the only state that humans ever get to exist in? And, as a bonus, if you get liberated enough, depending on the religion, you get superpowers that no living human being has ever exhibited despite the prehistoric roots of these fucking religions. You know, shit like perfect knowledge and infinite perception that would be pretty damn easy to test in a laboratory. You get some Buddhists and Sikhs out there looking for salvation through detachment, because according to their doctrine, all the definitionally human stuff like emotional attachment, pride, and pleasure are fucking you up and forcing your soul to focus on real-world stuff instead of important things like Neverland and Mordor. You know, Wiccans and all the little subcategories of people whose religion is one step removed from LARPing are, in my experience, mostly after psychedelics and casual sex. But to the extent that there's any theology undergirding the religion, it's all about unlocking superpowers through the perfection of the self. Basically, from a theological perspective, it's narcissistic Buddhism. You know, only atheism is willing to admit that there's nothing inherently wrong with being a human that lives on Earth. Only atheism is willing to say that you're probably not personing wrong. Only atheism is willing to take the world as it is, focus on the real, verifiable problems, and then trust humans to solve them. You know, that's not to say that atheism doesn't have its own form of soteriology, though. 
You know, after all, we're the ones saying, you're not going to hell. You're not a sinful wretch. You're not bounded by karma. You're not living in a fallen world. You're not condemned. You're not broken. Because our soteriology is an effort to save people from salvation. 